The current government that we've got is actually pro-corporate, yeah. anti-business. You pay a tax to be insured, which wasn't there 10 years yeah. ago. Particularly as we're going through Brexit, we need to be an entrepreneurial country. There's 5.7 million businesses. Yeah. Oh, you're getting me started here, okay. mate. I mean, I'm you've ready been, to go you think They're not the fault of the government, but they aren't fixing them in a way that could really encourage business. Mm. So the way the government gets taxed, I mean, they won't come out and say it, is they tax turnover. It makes me not want to carry on growing my company and make stop employing people yeah of course we've got to support companies in their first 10 20 years like those initial that's how we build the you know the apples of tomorrow the microsoft does them the next dice yes. the next jcb we've got to give them a helping hand Hey guys, James Sinclair here. Now I'm here with my buddy Carl, who has also got a podcast and loads of content Correct. marketing. But the funny thing about him is, if we just get a chance, can you just get a shot of him? Because he's the coolest accountant I've ever seen. I mean, look, Are you look, sure? at, the, look at the tats. He's got the <laughs> this little levery thing here. He's got the beard. Bless he, you. He's a very cool <laughs> accountant. But just just give us a, what is your business, just so people know. Because when we go into the conversation, I want them to know. Actually, this is the man worth listening to. Yeah, of course, sure. So James, first of all, thank you very much for inviting me on this video. Um, um, I've got a few business interests. Yep. My core business being a firm of accountants called D&T. Yep. So D&T is a firm that I was involved in a management buyout of back in 2010, I think the deal was done. We've yep. scaled it up. We've um, nailed a couple of niche markets. Yep. And we're pretty much dominating um, both the markets that we're in, but also the messaging that's going out to the accounting world, really trying to grab them and bring them to the 21st century in the way things should be done. Because I think people watching this would not expect an accountant not to wear a tie. You're the first accountant I've met that doesn't wear a tie. Really? No, I mean, what accountant absolutely. are you meeting? <laughs> well, I mean, just not people. I mean, you're just so cool, aren't you? So, so there's that. Um, but you've got a couple of books, haven't you, as well? I have, yes. yes. So I've got the Startup Coach and the Franchising Handbook. There we go. So there's a couple of good things there. Um, 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 well, I think we'll do another video quickly about franchising after sure. this one. I just had that as an idea, Chance. Why don't we do that? No one cares who's watching this. But we was having a little chat and we started getting into the big government word. Now, I'm very passionate about our government trying to help businesses in the SME sector. Sure. And you said something that just inspired me while we were recording this. And you said, what did you say? Oh, very simply, that the current government that we've got, yeah. a conservative government, most people would perceive to be pro-business, yeah. yeah. is actually pro-corporate, yeah. anti-business. And I've never heard anyone sum it up like that. Um, and I totally, one billion percent agree with mm. it. They are definitely pro-corporate, which I think is important. It, it is important, it is important. But look, um, pro-corporate is very important for the economy, also very important for the Conservative Party, yeah. in terms of donations, etc., yeah, etc. Yeah, yeah. However, the reality of the UK, particularly as we're going through Brexit, is we need to be an entrepreneurial country. There's 5.7 million businesses, yeah. And the current government are focused on 700 of them. Yeah. And that's scandalous. No, I, I, I mean, I really get very frustrated about this because I look at our country and I look at the, the United Kingdom PLC, yes. if it was a PLC, and I think there's a number of strings to our bows that we don't leverage off of mm. enough. Number one, we're trusted around the world. Yes. As a country, we are one of the most trusted countries in the world. We have one of the best legal systems in the world. Um, we have got you know, the language of business, most, you know, English is the trusted language. But also, listen, we, we underestimate that trust. Yeah. Yeah, you know, the trust I and know, the I respect is one yeah, thing, but yeah. also, made in England still yeah. carries yeah. some weight. You know, if you look yeah. at the Far East, yeah. um, I'm advising businesses who are going out to China, and yeah. they can just ride off the back of the fact that they're English. Yeah. It actually doesn't matter whether they're good, bad, or indifferent. Yeah. It's the made in England tag that they've got, yeah. which we, we sometimes, um, we put to the back of our mind and we forget how important that yeah. is. And we've got a, a great education system, yes. a brilliant, I mean, a, a trusted political system. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, on the whole, it's one of the best yes. in the world, even if you don't think it, you can look around the world and you realise how good we've got it. We've got a fantastic air system so you can get mm. into the UK. We've got loads of airports um, and we have a country full of talented people. Hey, look, listen, we're going yeah. on, to a, a, on to a very a nationalist, um, pro-UK thing. But uh, the other thing we need to remember but, is... But are you in agreement, Carl? We don't leverage off of that enough. Oh, absolutely not. Yeah. Look, if you look at the forecasts of PwC and HSBC in 2050, yeah. the UK will still be pretty much where it is at the moment. Yeah, the, rest, the rest of the global economy is shifting. Yeah. You know, we're up against the likes of Brazil, India yeah. and so yeah. on. That, 
that whole world is changing. So, so, so let me tell you my frustrations, mm. and I get very, very angry about it. We have a great services system, yes, and, and we focused a lot on that. And yes, we should financial services and stuff like that. But we have got this other parts of the country where we could make stuff again. Mm. Um, and we, and we have got some successes. We have got JCB. Yeah. We have got Dyson. And I just don't get why our government doesn't say, right, let's put a few billion quid into companies that are turning, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50, 100 million that are there. And if we invested in them, they could become two, three, four, yeah, look, we, we, we've got a few things. We've got a few problems. Um, but the government aren't aren't fixing, they're not the fault of the government, but they aren't fixing them in a way that could really encourage business. Mm -hmm. So the first one is the land bank and the properties, even central yeah. London in particular. Yeah. You know, they cannot, the, the um, pension funds that own the properties yeah. can't reduce the rent because it impacts the values of the pension funds. Oh, I, okay. I, so you've got empty property in Covent Oh, you're Garden. getting me started here, okay. mate. I mean, I'm you've ready to on, go now. You then move on to business rates. Yeah. Okay. And the issues around business rates. There but is so much got, that can be done. Because <laughs> I've got as long as you need, mate. As long as you need. No, I mean, I, I, am, I, I went and met some MPs and spoke about business rates. Are I mean, I'm just fed up with the tax on turnover. Why mm. do we get taxed on turnover? Because the corporates don't pay the right amount of corporations tax and they should so the way the government gets taxed I mean they won't come out and say it is they tax turnover I mean the tax on turnover is VAT business rates national insurance premium tax I mean you pay a tax to be insured which wasn't there 10 years yeah. ago I mean that is for us in our business that costs us 50, the other, the, a then the other problem on top of that is once Brexit happens the UK can then adapt VAT as it is you know the current exemptions that some small businesses benefit from yeah is only down to the original EC directive that stated these things need to be exempt. Yeah, yeah. And with the path that the government have been on so far with squeezing small business yeah. and presuming, I'm particularly the self employed, presuming that the self employed are only self employed to avoid tax, yeah. which I, I, I just think is scandalous. Yeah. Um, if they continue that presumption and continue the journey they're on, yeah. we're just going to see um, multinational corporates paying less and less and less. Yeah. Hopefully more in the UK as corporation tax comes down rather than Luxembourg or wherever else. We see them paying less and less and less and those who can't afford to or don't want to avoid tax, we're gonna see them being squeezed more and more until they end up deciding just to go and get a job. Well, the, the, we've got to. We've got to support companies in their first 10, 20 years, like those initial, that's how mm. we build the, you know, the Apples of tomorrow, the Microsofts of the next Dyson, yes. the next JCB. We've got to give them a helping hand and think, yeah, let's think about this as an education system. It takes 24 years, 25 years to get someone from zero into being a doctor and we're like prepared to back those people for education. We've got to do the same for businesses. And then we, we have this, huge opportunity in this country we're not you know like brazil are coming up the ranks and africa are mm. coming up the ranks but they haven't got the trust that we have no, they as, haven't. as no, the they uk haven't. have got but you look at the support that the gcc for example you look at dubai the support that entrepreneurs get in dubai yeah, I know. you know they get funded to start their business if it's successful and it hits plan they get funded even more yeah now i'm not suggesting that we chuck free money i don't think we got free money to chuck at people like that yeah. but actually when you look at the support that was there um you know business link and stuff like that that's gone now yeah and all that's happened is private providers have come in and yeah. rip off small businesses so, so i've got some ideas and mm. i'd just like to fire that to you because these are my ideas business rates need a complete overhaul yeah now I don't know what that overhaul is and what will work, other than they need to be lower. My whole thing is we shouldn't tax turnover, we should tax profit. Now, yes. when we're taxing people through salary or taxing companies through profit, because a big part of this country is the service sector. The reason that people are lowly paid in the service sector is because VAT is so high. Mm. I think restaurants, um, tourism attractions, uh, service businesses should have a lower rate of VAT than products. So you've got a really nice watch on. I think that should be a 25% VAT thing. But if you I don't. don't. 
no, you don't. <laughs> but I, th I, I would be prepared personally, when I buy something nice or I buy a product, I pay a higher rate of VAT, but when I go out for dinner, I want to pay a lower sure. rate of VAT so that the person on the other, because it would create competition in mm, the industry, mm. people would start getting paid more, salaries would go up and people would keep more. I just think VAT is such a colossally dangerous, and because the people in this country, in the UK, don't understand VAT and realise how much it impacts cost on so yes. much things. In the States, they do, because everything's plus the tax. Yeah, and you know, I think that that, that actually, for me, would be one of my preferred routes is to go to a plus tax environment. Yeah. So that there's transparency. The they haven't made that happen. No. Because they, they wouldn't be able to because put Because it, it then allows the devolved nations, you know, Scotland, for example, politically, wants to pay more tax than England. Yeah. You know, they see, um, as a general electorate, they see the benefit of contributing a little bit more and getting some more benefit from it. Yeah. So if we actually had plus tax rather than inclusive, it just yeah. gives that transparency of, of what cash you're paying over and what you're paying to the tax man. Yeah. Well, I, I think businesses could do that. Mm. There's nothing stopping businesses. So it comes back to like people in my sector making it really obvious when people pay to get into one of our attractions we say this is the price plus the tax yes. um, and, and we need to work harder on doing that and, I, and we should do that but we'd be the only people doing that and that's just a bit weird uh, you'll stand out that sort of fun which mm. you know we need to get more and more people behind this whole thing I just think you know I look at restaurants and you know they're really struggling and I just think you know and I look at retail on the high street, they're really struggling and, and these constant taxes on turnover, I just, I'm fed up with it. And I, it makes me not want to carry on growing my company and make stop employing people. Yeah, of course. So, I mean, for me, I think that and one, of the the big, one of the big things that can be done is to have a much lighter touch on regulation. You know, employing people is an absolute nightmare. Yeah. I think yeah. employment protections are good. Yeah. You know, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that it should Absolutely, be any easier yeah. to fire people, yeah. but to hire people. And you know, certainly when you're starting up, your first 10 employees, it should be as painless as possible. Yeah, it's not Whereas enough. actually, the stuff that you need to do as an employer, yeah. you wonder whether you really want to go down that route. Yeah, and loads of entrepreneurs and business owners, they need to employ people to build a brilliant business, otherwise they're tied to it, yes. as you know, Carl. But you can get why they're doing all these things to avoid complications. Yes. You know, it's, and we're just not. So how about, I mean, I, this has just come off the top of my head, but when you employ in your first 10 people, the tax isn't to the government. Because let's be honest, the majority of the tax take is from corporates. Yeah. You know, it is from the employment taxes of the employed, not the self-employed. Yeah. But your first 10 employees, that money goes into a development pot to help you scale your business. Well, that would be fantastic. Wouldn't it? Would and it's win-win-win, isn't it? Yeah, well, I, I, I applaud all these ideas. But then I'm sitting on the other side and I'm thinking government needs to collect money to run the country so I'm not mm. complete and utter fool mm. you know I understand that we need taxes to run what is you know people moan about this country and, and, and I'm moaning about it here but on the whole it's a good place to yes. be it's a safe place to be but know? is it is it fair that the um, starting stroke scaling business of up to 10 employees yeah is paying the same amount of employers national insurance as Microsoft or Apple or Amazon no, um, I would say... Should we not be encouraging no, UK businesses is, to develop? I uh, provided should, it's ring-fenced. No, because I think, I, think, um, I think you'd have a problem there with the employees knowing that their taxes are not going into the system to pay for the NA. Just pay no, 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 but it's steady in the business that they work for. Yeah, I think... I, 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 hey, it's a random off top my head idea. I mean, it's a great <laughs> idea, but I think, you know, there, there, there would be... I just don't want the tax on turnover that's there, mm. which I don't think we should be paying... Tax, what I would be happy with, not paying a 13.5% national insurance thing, you yes. know, or employee, employers national insurance just to employ people. I, d I don't agree with that, especially when businesses are small. I would much rather have a higher corporation tax and pay tax when we've made a profit, but the problem the government have... Probably is corporates. They can't control the corporates. Yes. So I think they would prefer that as well, but they're just, everyone loves I think the U it. I think the UK corporates would. Um, it's those who've got multinational arrangements and can decide where to put yeah. that money. It just feels like, I, I just feel like, you know, if you did it in someone's wages, because we pay about 40 
six and a half percent of our turnover to the government. Yeah. So twenty percent of that's VAT, and the rest is all the other stuff that yes. you know is dressed up in other taxes, business rates, employers' national insurance premium tax, you know, all the other things that they they find and get you on. I, I can't imagine if you paid someone a thousand pounds that was a lower rate taxpayer that half of their tax half of their income was gone that just people wouldn't accept that no but that's what businesses are doing yeah the problem is you're not perceived as a as a lower taxpayer but when i'm taking it back to the 10 employee suggestion of cutting employer and i um actually these guys typically the business owner isn't taking out any money themselves no business owners you know this is you know people think business owners making loads of money they sacrifice sometimes a decade yeah and that they just run this thing for less than minimum wage. So what's your take on entrepreneurial education? Because obviously there was the business links and so on and so forth, but do you feel the government do enough to, to help people understand that being an entrepreneur is actually an option? How, how do you mean, Carl? So the awareness of the fact that you can start a business rather than go into a career. Because I know when I went to school, yeah. business studies was about the 700. Yeah. It wasn't about 5.7 million or whatever no. the number was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I think uh, on the, my view is on that that the person that starts a business needs to have the right resilience, like mm. you know, the, and the, the power to carry on and do a great job and get through when things are very difficult. And I don't think everyone has that. So if if someone's got that, then yeah, go and set up your own business. And if you haven't got a real passion for hard work and those long days, it ain't gonna it's happen. Not, it's it? not for you, you know, because it's easy to give up. And and I understand why lots of people do give mm. up. So there, and that's what I think for that. What um, so what what Carl, what what else do you think government could be doing? So mine's tax on turnover. Mine's I want a low. I want the lowest possible taxes for SMEs. Sure. And, so and for I, me, and I do for corporates too because yeah. I want them to stay in the UK. Look, I think that from from a tax perspective, it's it's proven that the lower the corporation tax, the higher the take. Yeah. Which sounds um, sounds completely illogical, yeah. but it is just down to the fact that you've got clever accountants and yeah. tax planners who which say, will always be there. It will always and be it's there. It's a global world, isn't it? Exactly. So we need to play to the fact it's a global world, yeah. and whilst we've got the independent opportunities that are coming up, make the most of that. Yeah. yeah. Um, be a low tax environment and try and get as many headquarters in the UK as possible. What, I think that's a good thing. What about personal tax? I mean, my view is everyone should just pay twenty percent, and if anyone then if higher rate people really cheat the system then the the i mean like i'm talking about ultra yeah. high networks so you know if they I really pers- cheat it i mean, personally and i know everyone has their own different alignment on the compass yeah. i'm i'm similar to you in that i believe that there should be a flat rate across the board yeah. uh, but also a high charitable society where you feel almost compelled yeah. personally to contribute back yeah. Um, and I've, I, I don't think we've necessarily got that, and that's one of the challenges. So, so as an accountant, I'm thinking mm. about, say there's some super high net worth people sure. that, that earn £10 million a year personally, and that they are about yes. £5 million yeah. a year personally, £2 million a year personally, £1 million a year personally. Now, someone works for a company that earns a million to £10 million, if they're a high-level board director, they'd be paying through PAYE, and yes. the government will collect their take. But there's lots of smart people yeah. that earn that sort of money and they take their cash they get it out of the country oh, they do. They yeah, yeah. but what I was thinking if you if you had a fair flat rate now it might be 30% 25% but you know when people start getting up to level and they're paying half of their income mm. over and they work really hard people get the other you can see that. why the motivation for yeah. these schemes takes place yes exactly yeah so I'm just thinking well why don't we just say right okay it's a new 25% 30% yeah, yeah, I think there's there's far cleverer people than me to to predict the economic shock of that however yeah you, we looked at corporation tax and the yeah. fact that when it went from is it 26% down um, yeah, it's dropped by almost 10% and yeah. the take has actually gone up. Yeah. Um, hopefully, we, that, we've seen this with work. stamp duty. You know, mm. the, you say, they've done all these stupid things with stamp duty uh, and they've taken a billion pounds less than the year before. Yes. And you just think... But you know, I, I, I really do feel as a general concept rather than in, going into the specifics, the government should make it... it they should encourage contributions within the UK rather than contributions elsewhere. Yeah. And at the moment, contributions are being made elsewhere. Yeah, so, so this is my big thing. 
UK has a huge object now Brexit whether you voted remain or leave whatever you wanted to do there you know we, we are down this road now yeah uh, whatever way you look at it you've got to see the opportunity for that's it. right yeah so whether you're a remain and leave and I, I sort of sat in the middle of yeah. both I, you know we are where we are I want to make the most opportunity yes. from it now so in the next few years if we became you know, and Theresa May said, you know, if you don't do what I say, we'll make it a low tax or something. And I'm just thinking, brilliant, you can have yes. all these Chinese people, <laughs> all these Japanese people, it'd be fun, you know, because they trust yes. the UK and we just don't, you know, I get very passionate about this. But it's also, it's innovation. You yeah. know, our hands are tied on certain areas of innovation. Yeah, yeah. And we're going to have our hands untied and we can create our own legislation yeah, yeah. and our own regulation, self driving yeah. cars. Yeah. We should be at the forefront of that technology. Yeah, we can be. Yes. That's, this is what I really, you know, we can be, because because of our country's that good. You know? But if we have a high tax environment yeah. and high regulation, and we yeah. stifle the enterprise, yeah. it ain't gonna happen. Yeah, I mean, one of the other things that really winds me up is R and D. You know, mm. so th there's companies get is it, for those people that don't know about this, you get research and development rebates that you can take off yeah. your corporation tax if you're a tech company mm. and stuff like that. But, but you know, why can't we do that to you know? To the more traditional brick and mortar businesses that are really having a tough time of it. You know, we go, you know, I saw Philip Hammond going, well, the high street's changed. Like, yeah, the high street is changing because things are moving faster than they've ever moved yes. before. But, you know, previous generations had time, you know, a couple of decades to adapt. Now we need to say, right, okay, there's a problem there. Let's give you some grants to innovate that company so that you can stay in business because you've got some employees, you've got something there. Let's help you. I get so annoyed with, so, you know, we just, and I, I think- Well, I think it comes back to that core that the business is pro-corporate, anti-business. Yeah. And I think we, we do just need it, to continually brainstorm or is these it ideas. pro-corporate, we don't really care about business. Good question. Good question. Because the reason, I, the reason I say that, the reason, business not important enough. The reason I say that, I mean, you, you hear Boris Johnson fuck business. And I hope you don't mind me swearing on your video. Uh, but that was Boris Johnson's comment. And actually, the government have got very big things on their plate at the moment. Yeah, of course. It could just be that they yeah. need to look after their biggest donors and the problem of Brexit. Yeah. That could be the reason why um, business in general is at the back of their mind. The thing is, though, all those 700 started off with this. Everyone starts somewhere, yes. don't they? And, and they build up. And, and that, that's the thing that... You but know, we're now in a globalised world. Yeah. So whereas those 700 started, you know, if you were to rewind 200, 300 years, um, you're in a good economy, you've got... Um, you, you, you're probably, I, I don't know my history, but British Empire, um, Britain still had influence back then. Yeah. You were in a very powerful place at that point to grow. Yeah. Today, you are up against everyone globally. Yeah, we still have, you know, I, if someone says, right, sh you know, should we use the UK compared to some other countries, I think the UK would score quite high because people trust us. They know our legal system. They'll say it come back mm. around to us. When you've got a good legal system. It would. However, I'm just going to play devil's advocate on that, though. Let's say that you're a tech startup and the majority of businesses starting up seem to be tech startups at the moment. Yeah, yeah. And you have an um, office address at Marsh Farm yeah. or an office address in San Francisco. Yeah. Which one's going to get VC funding? Well, I think you've structured that question to get what you want out of it. <laughs> if, said, if we've got one in San Francisco or one in London. Yes. I, I, I think I, San Francisco. Really? I, I mean, I, I think London... I think that there's that super duper opportunities. Oh, it, it, it's, it's it a leading does. city around it the world. It does. So. However, um, in terms of tech startups, San Francisco is where you need to be yeah. if you really want to raise that money. But um, 300 years ago, it wasn't. 300 years ago, you'd be in Absolutely. Yeah, but people still, you know, London has a birth of talent and great people mm. around it. But it's not just tech, you know, there's pharmaceuticals. You know, we've got one of the leading medical universities and stuff in this country some great people know about medicine some of the best doctors and professors in the world pharmaceuticals yep. is still a huge industry let's pile in and create more pharmaceutical companies jcb one of the greatest things that are still going in this country dyson you know we've creating so you know it can't just be about tech startups because a lot of those things are ideas and those idea businesses do bad and i'm not all of them but some mm. of the best but you know you make a hoover people still need a hoover you know people still need a Bigger, and people still need pharmaceuticals and there's others and I just think oh god you know like there's just you know we still got you know British Aerospace great UK yes. company there's there's still I'm a big fan of you know not just having I like 
physical stuff, and that's what the mm. UK is known for: the Rolls Royce, the Bentley. You know, they're, they're the things that that you know. Even though some of them, the problem is, we, now, the problem but, is, I mean, we're going back in a, in a circle here. But with our business rates, with the property issues, yeah. with the the sheer fact that we are limited by water to how much we can build, yeah, um, we're always going to struggle against these newer economies that have got the space, they've got the people. They're still. I mean, if you go up to the yeah, you. It's very hard. I mean, I'm sticking up from a from a country here, and I can't. I know you're a Brit as well, but you know, when you when you're in London, and I live in Essex, which is a home county, that section of the United Kingdom is very crowded. You can't imagine it. But yeah. if you just go up north and drive three and a half, I hours, don't. I don't go up north. <laughs> if you go up three and a half hours, there is a breath of opportunity there. Mm. You know, Chudders and I, we went. Um, the guy that makes all of our videos. We went up and done a a, a speaking to a, a business up in Cleveland. Thorps, which okay. is in the north of the country, and those guys are all brick and mortar businesses, mm. and there is huge, massive opportunities. And I think the whole and, and Scotland. Because it then and comes to Wales. another thing we haven't discussed is planning. You know, yeah. there is a lot of green space, as you've said, yeah. but it's green belt and it can't be touched. Yeah, but there's. It's not just those. There's, you know, because everyone thinks southeast, and I'm a southeasterner, mm. so I think southeast as well. All my businesses sure. are in the southeast. But if I was in charge running this show, I'd be saying right north of the country. That is going to mm. be the manufacturing. The the, the we're going to create things out there, and then the south is going to be our services industry. So if it was my country, I'd be saying right manufacturing in the north, services in the south. You marry them together, and the, the UK PLC would be. You know, we, let's make you know more stuff because people still you know th th we could invent things and people will listen to us they would but you know my old man's from a manufacturing background yeah and unfortunately that world is dying away down to it's down to global pressures i think that making stuff's important but it's about the innovation and the design and coming up with something yeah. good because if, if it ain't good i'm not saying my old man's stuff what, what did good. he what did he manufacture safes was? safes yeah people still need safes they do. Panic rooms. But they buy, <laughs> but they buy him. They buy him dirt cheap from B and Q yeah. nowadays. Uh, yes. B and Q buy him dirt cheap from China. So, so what we can do with our brand as a country? Mm. Every country has a brand. We can make the world's best safes. Yes. Like we do with Dyson. Like we do with JCB. Dyson and, and is, is not where, cheap. Ma Hoover, and this is where made in England holds back. Yeah, that's um, right. That seal of approval. Like BAE stuff is. You know, you can mm. go and buy. I'm not going to slag any other countries off, but you can buy its counterpart for a lot cheaper from another yes. country. But people want BAE stuff, you know, um, and people want, you know, Dyson. They want JCB, and I, you know, I think that that the north of this country, where there is space and where you know investment is needed, but the government have got to say, right, we're really going to, you know allow that to happen and we've never allowed that to happen we've allowed them to build big banks mm. we, we rbs was one of the biggest banks in the world at one oh, point oh it was absolutely subsidized by yeah, the government absolutely and, yeah and hey. we was prepared to do that but we wasn't prepared but then you so got, james we're changing it what's our plan well I, I, <laughs> we've got to be we've got to stop taxing turnover mm. and start taxing profit that's always been you know, steadfast my view, um, and we've got to find a way that the government invests in innovation. Of I mean, does it change so that VAT just becomes a sales tax to the end consumer? And well, we just strip out all the hassle. Affects. That's all, all it affects at the moment. Yeah, but, all, it's, but it's an administrative the bur sector. It's a burden along the way. Yeah, but VAT. When you you know in the B two B world, you buy a pallet of bricks for hundred quid plus VAT. Exactly. That's how. But I, I, don't, service, I don't think of a VAT apart yeah. from cash flow. It, yeah. It's something that knocks out my projections. Yeah. But apart from that, from my own business perspective, yeah. I look at something plus VAT. But when, when pe if people understood it, they went into Tesco's or Sainsbury's mm. and they bought 100 quid's worth of stuff and realised that, I mean, there, there'll be some non datable stuff, but yeah. for ease, let's just go and say that 20 quid of that 100 quid's gone to the government. So really, you've only bought 80 pounds worth of stuff. If that was plain and obvious, mm. They wouldn't put up VAT exactly. like they do now. When they, when the government, when the chancellor goes, oh, we're putting VAT up to fifteen percent, to seventeen half percent, to twenty percent, they put it up to twenty five percent. People just don't really they understand. Don't, they don't get it, and yeah. you get a few who other than business um, owners. Oh, we go, we're going understand. on, we're going off on a tangent here, but you know, we look at the tampon tax. You had a yeah. few um, politically minded people who really got it and understood yeah. and yeah. read up on it. Um, but the vast majority of people, it would be the bit of the news that they'd switch off. Yeah, yeah. And they wouldn't even realise it was an issue. However, no. if they went to a supermarket and saw that it was plus VAT, and then yeah. they saw something, you know, like um, bottled water plus VAT, yeah. milkshake, no VAT. 
yeah, and they yeah. will see the inconsistencies. Yeah, that are there. and that's but see when you go to America, uh, you know if the, if they put up sales tax, that's a vote loser. Yes, but over here it would be a vote loser to put up you know mm. income tax. That's the thing that people yeah. know. If they, if they look on their pace and go, oh, that's, you know, I've lost less this month compared to last month. That really, you know, hurts mm. them. But I, I'm just, VAT for me, I'm just fed up of it. You know, especially in my business, when I know that Ireland pays a lower VAT on yep. tourism and services. Spain, if you go to a, stay in a hotel or go into a restaurant in Spain, it's only 10%. Everything else is 21%. Yep. So, so we could be doing it in this country. We need to protect tourism and services. But so, there's also, it's about finding the right level so that the grey market isn't the grey market anymore. Yeah. You know, I think that one of the missions of the government shouldn't be about increasing tax take from those who are willing to pay and pay the right amount. Yeah. It should actually be about increasing tax take so that everyone pays their fair share. Yeah. yeah. And, and I'm a big... One of the other things that they can really help businesses is simplify the blooming thing. Mm. You know, it's so complicated. And that's where the flat rate, as yeah. you mentioned, I am a fan of just for simplification, but there's no... There's no incentive not to earn more. Yeah, that's, I mean, that, I think personal tax should be hugely simplified. Mm. It's, you know, because it, it's so, so much, and they put so many rules in place that smart accountants and tax accountants, not day to day accountants, find other ways of getting it, out of it. Exactly. And look, I mean, I'm, I'm, very, I'm very rusty on accountancy and tax. It's been, however, I do know that when you hit 100k earnings, when yeah. you get to 101k, you're paying an effective rate, I believe it's about 60 odd percent. Yeah. Okay, and then it drops down when you hit 113, I believe, down to 40 percent again. Yeah. Yeah, and these um, nuances in our system just lead to everyone saying, well, I've got 99,000 income. Yeah. And we shouldn't have loopholes like that. No, yeah, I know, yeah, because you use your tax free allowance. Exactly. If you want to, yeah. I mean, the whole. The whole thing needs to be simplified and worked out. Carl, it's been a, a fantastic little chat. This. It's been great fun. Chance, enjoyed have you, it. Have you enjoyed it, Chance? It was very interesting. It was really <laughs> interesting. I liked it because uh, Chance is behind the camera filming this, by the way, guys. <laughs> we were just wondering, who's, who's Chance? <laughs> who's he talking to? Um, you know, I, I really thoroughly enjoyed that. Ladies and gents, Carl, thank you very much. We'll be back soon. Bye-bye. Hey guys, thanks for watching the video. Really hope you earned loads. Now, here's a few things that you need to do. You need to hit subscribe so you're notified when we bring out a new video and you can watch the rest of our videos by clicking here and it gets better than that. If you want to come and spend the day with me and learn some real entrepreneurial stuff, come to my free super success seminar. All the details of how you can come along to that are in the link in the description on the video. See you very soon. Bye-bye.